It is 739 and we are nearing the end of the murder trial for former attorney Alec Murdoch in the Low Country. This morning, the defense will present their closing arguments, but yesterday the state made their final case compiling and presenting their evidence as to how and why Alec shot and killed his own wife Maggie and his son Paul. Lead prosecutor Creighton Waters recapped the forensic timeline, saying that it puts Murdoch at the scene. The family's weapons that were used supports it, and Murdoch's guilty actions and all of those lies confirm it. Joining me this morning is our trial analyst, that's Lori Murray. And Lori, I want to get right into some new information that we've learned from overnight. We're hearing about the possibility of a juror being released from their duties. Have you heard about this, and do you know anything about it? I have heard the rumors that there was some juror issues and that one is likely to be released this morning. They are down to two alternates and it's getting kind of uh, it's getting kind of tight in there. But there is something that's going on. That's what they were meeting about in chambers yesterday. And I believe it's related to some kind of juror misconduct. OK, all right, we're going to get back to the jury and the deliberations and how long those could possibly last in just a minute. But I want to recap yesterday. It's been such a long trial. The state has presented so much evidence. I mean, something like 76 witnesses. Do you think that this is a good job, that they did a good job bringing it all together and connecting the dots for the jury? I think they did. Yeah, you know, I had a lot of people on social media because I, I put that out to my social media followers and asked them what they thought that was the number one comment that I got that they were all confused and that he brought it together for them at the end. I think it was a long closing argument. I think he could have done that in about half the time that he did it in. But the ending, the very ending, when he started with that timeline, that's when he started really building his momentum and I think he finished strong. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that actually captured my attention was the fact that he was saying, you know, Alec got up there and he said that he lied to SLED because of his distrust in SLED. But then he says, well, then why did he lie about being at the dog kennels on his 911 call? And when the first responding officer um, came out there, was uh, that a compelling part for you? And if not, what were some other ones? Uh, that was a compelling part for me, yes. You know, but the thing is, the reason of his that he that Alec Murdoch has given for his lies is about as okay. credible as the motive in this case and the financial crimes his motive I don't buy it I don't buy his reason for lying I I don't buy any of it I think we have a whole story backstory here that we are never going to know and the only person who will ever know it is Alec Murdoch because he was there there's no denying the fact that he was there that night all right, now to the closing arguments for the defense. I'm also hearing some rumors that Jim Griffin is going to be delivering that closing argument instead of Dick Harpoolian. Um, have you heard this, and why do you think that decision was made? That is accurate. Jim Griffin will be delivering the closing arguments. As he said yesterday he was going to take about two to two and a half hours to deliver that. Dick Harpoolian is a strong attorney. He has been one of the best attorneys in South Carolina for many years. But my understanding is he's coming off a battle with COVID in December, and he is just not fully over it. I don't think he has the same stamina he had because he's older as well. And, and Jim is a very impassioned attorney. I think that he's going to do a good job, but I believe that's probably why they made the decision. All right. And what does the jury need to hear from the defense? What are the key points that the defense has to hit this morning and this afternoon when talking about those closing arguments? Well, I think they really have to hit, you know, hard on the mistakes that SLED made in this case, the mistakes, the missing evidence, the, the non-investigation, if you will, because there were so many things that were found after SLED had left the scene. They really have to hit on that. I, I think they have to stay away from the financial crimes. They have to own all of that immediately. You walk up there and you say, yes, he lied. We are not denying that. Yes, he stole money. We are not denying that, but that's not what we're here for. We can tell you that he did all of those things but we can also tell you that he didn't kill his wife and child. All right, and then after closing arguments are complete, um, the jury will start deliberations. Do we know a timeline for that? I'm also hearing that this could they could deliberate into the weekend if need be. Well, we also have, don't forget, we have a rebuttal close by the state. I'm hearing either Alan Wilson or John Metters is gonna be given that, so they'll have another chance to get back up there and be the last person in front of that jury. That should be a short and sweet argument. Either way, I think that with charges and these two closing arguments today, I think the jury will have this case by this afternoon, even if it's late this afternoon. And I am hearing that Judge Newman has said that they will deliberate into the weekend if necessary. I don't know whether that means Saturday and Sunday or just Saturday, but if needed, they will go to the weekend. 
All right, Lori, thank you so much as always for joining us this morning. We'll of course talk to you later and we're going to be bringing you the closing arguments live on air when they start today and you can also watch them inside of our Fox Carolina News app, which can be streamed on Roku, Apple and Fire TV. And don't forget that we have that live blog that's happening and the live chat on our website. We're showing you exactly what it looks like right here so you can catch up on anything you might have missed or even chime in on the conversation. That's on FoxCarolina.com. And Lori Murray will be joining us every weekday around 740 throughout the entirety of the Murdoch trial. Make sure that you tune in to catch it each morning and hear her main takeaways from the day before, as well as what to look out for in the upcoming days. This is